So my name is Ruthiana Nyaro Edwatch. People know me as Ruth. Um, 22 this year. I live in Melbourne, Australia. Before photography, I was writing, and I had this obsession of kind of bringing those words into reality and kind of somehow using photography or using um because i used to paint i mean i still do but i don't really focus on my paintings um or doing painting at all um so i kind of really thought that photography was like the lazy version of kind of bringing those words into a reality so i yeah started off just taking photos as an amateur i studied um studio arts um in high school so that really kind of pulled me in into that whole um you know photography life I think being a person of colour in Australia influenced me because it's like there's so much difficulties and there's so much that you can say and so much that you can project out into the world as an artist so you know yeah my friends influenced me I'm around a lot of creative minds my mum influenced me so everything that I observe in my life is kind of the becomes the projection of my work so everything that I do is within myself I'm always in my own mind I'm always like in my own space i love solitude so when i gather that information i gather you know a sense of grounding or like a, a point of direction um to create a project you know i it normally is fixated in that headspace so like i guess is my experience as as a woman of color you know and being somebody um of the diaspora um living in australia i think yeah i yeah most of my projects are, are very politically driven as a, as a, as a woman of colour here. I've had one um, project that I put out there in the world, but I have a few that are very like pulled back, but one of them that um, a lot of people know is The Many Faces of Nyarwat. So basically, I didn't really, it wasn't a project. It was just basically me documenting myself in like moments where I'm just in my own, you know, mind and I'm in this very lucid, you know, um, place in life where I'm either angry, I'm either sad, I'm either happy, I'm either feeling isolated or alienated from myself and I just, you know, took uh, images to kind of um, define those moments and somehow it just became like a photo imagering series where I had 10 photos that kind of described, you know, highlights of my life and that project went for a year. and. It, I didn't really have it, like I said, I never really saw it as a project, it was most of me documenting myself, it was kind of like um, journaling without writing, but taking photos of yourself and seeing how you change and seeing like, because, you know, one of them, one of the um, images is um, titled, I, I Forgot How to Cry, and it was kind of like the first moment I've cried in four years. So for me to document that, that was kind of a very like a cleansing moment for myself and it's, it's something to, for me to look back and just see that breakthrough and then kind of ask myself, how did I get there? Branding myself out there. So when people see my images, they're like, okay, we know this is Ruth's work. And we know who she is and, as an artist and not kind of like people see my work that we don't know if this is her or not, but I'm working on a project kind of um, exploring and challenging of people of the diaspora. Um, and it's called displacement. I find it very difficult to kind of call myself Australian because there's so much that has happened to me that I'm so angered by it and kind of um, showing respect to, you know, indigenous people and looking um, more so into their lifestyle and looking at what happened to them and kind of like, how do I now fit in a, in a land that, you know, there's bloodstains of injustice everywhere. Like, how do I call that home when other people that has been taken away from them and kind of exploring that anger that I have and coming to Australia and assimilating to Western culture and losing my um, cultural identity and showing the frustration and also um, the pain and also showing the joy of me kind of retouching myself and, you know, finding my roots and who I am as, you know, as a South Sudanese woman. You know, because I feel like that's really has been, it's been washed out of me. I feel like I use my art to heal, to heal me and yeah, I'm very excited for this project. A sense of motivation and asking yourself, why do you create? You know, what, what is your art going to do to you? And to me, like I work a nine to five job, you know, to kind of support myself as an artist, but I also, you know, most of my time and energy spent into me creating and me planning out projects and me working with people and me taking photos of people. So it's just kind of like finding what motivates you, find, finding what grounds you, 
finding what's the meaning of art to you because everybody has a different perspective but once you find your own understanding once you find your own meaning of what art is i don't think anything in this world can stop you from creating i feel like you're just gonna go crazy and just start doing things for yourself and start you know kind of claiming that title as an artist so yeah find your meaning what art is <laughs> <laughs>